Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, we are in the midst of the Hellfire Gala run-up with the X-Men election. This is a uh, concept, gimmick, storyline idea, amazing uh, thing or terrible decision. It's up to you. You get to vote. Uh, where they said basically that uh, they opened up voting for who will join the X-Men. Um, and they, they opened it up to 10 characters. And they they did the equivalent of like uh, if you were if you grew up in the the 80s or the early 90s there was these uh, call a 900 number and you could vote on something. Uh, every uh, lots of companies were doing it, and I I seem to remember Marvel doing it. I mean, famously, uh, DC did it for the should Jason Todd live or die, um, and in this case, it's uh, it's it's not as dramatic as that. But we have 10 characters to join. You know, one of them will join the X Men. And we'll have a, a demo. Yeah, they made a little storyline of it. We want democratic votes for uh, for the X Men. I think this is one of those things that probably seemed like a a really cool idea when it was uh, thought up last summer uh, as we were heading toward the U.S. elections. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, fan engagement. I, sure. I mean, I'll, I'll give it this. Uh, this is uh, much much better of an idea than that uh, DC round robin uh, fan engagement tournament at the moment. But hey, I'm not here to throw shade. Well, not yet. Uh, so anyway, uh, the idea was that the, the new member of the X-Men would get revealed at the Hellfire Gala. Um, uh, I I believe that was the case mostly because Marvel said that was the case. They said in, uh, in the solicitations that was going to be one of the reasons why you would buy uh, those comics. And if you remember from House of X, Powers of Ten, they had this concept of a red issue. And that was where in the, um, you know, the, the issues that are coming out at the end of the book, uh, some of them would be colored black and some of them would be colored red. And the red ones were, in theory, where more important things were going to happen or some major status quo was going to change. And they, they did this for uh, when Moira was revealed to be a mutant and living all these timelines. That was a red issue. I think that was the first red issue. And so it kind of, you know, sold the concept home that the red issues were, were bigger deals. You should pay attention to them even more. I always kind of question a little bit of that marketing because uh, it's like, uh, you know, pay attention to this one, not all those other ones. Those other ones are crap, but this one, um, of course, they want you to pay attention to all of them. But I, I, I jest a little bit. It's fine. Color coding. Everybody likes those. So, um, you know, the the one of the red issues that is coming up for the Hellfire Gala is the revelation of who won the vote, who's actually going to be a new member of the X-Men, um, how the you know, first time fan engagement for has happened for uh, picking a member of the team. So they did a vote and on uh, on Twitter, at least a lot of the creators and, and people seem to be really pushing for Morrow. Uh, they there's this uh, there's this whole weird thing where current creators uh, look at kind of stuff that was kind of dumb in the 90s or stuff that really didn't uh, didn't land well and then they have this newfound fondness it's 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 a mix of nostalgia and irony except uh, the, the the difference is people are unironically loving things that maybe weren't the best uh, in the 90s uh, there's a there's a campaign going on around vanilla ice and remember how cool vanilla ice was and it's like no vanilla ice was not was not cool uh in the 90s but uh but sure if you want to think that that's fine uh but Mara was not one of the the most beloved characters at the time and you know absence has made the heart grow fonder a little bit um the other one that comes up a lot is stacy x which was uh, famously introduced i believe in chuck austin's run as a as a pheromone inducing uh prostitute x-men uh x-man who would just walk around naked i think she was Who'd she go after? A Bobby or Iceman? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it was not good. Uh, but that's another character people are like, man, I love Stacey X. It's like, no, 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 st stop with that. So uh, the X-Men election uh, basically had armor, uh, you know, famously kind of introduced and popularized in, uh, in Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men run. I think armor actually did show up earlier. I think there was, I, I believe uh, armor showed up in, uh, in Grant Morrison's run, but really kind of came into her own in the uh, Joss Whedon Astonishing X-Men run. Banshee, of course, one of the, the original characters. Uh, Polaris, uh, the, the character, and again, another very old school character, uh, you know, daughter of Magneto, or maybe not, but yeah, for sure. Um, Maro, of course, we talked about Maro. Uh, Boom Boom, who uh, came about, uh, I, I believe in, uh, this is Louise Simonson's run of X-Factor, I think is where Boom Boom made an appearance, but uh, a lot of people, became more fond of Boom Boom through Next Wave. 
uh, strong guy uh, who was uh, kind of most most fondly beloved from Peter David's X Factor run, uh, Cannonball and Sunspot, of course, from New Mutants, and then recently appeared in uh, in Hickman's brief tenure writing some of New Mutants, and he used them in the Avengers. Uh, we've got Forge, one of my favorite characters of all time, of course, uh, brought about uh, during Chris Claremont's uh, run, had his relationship with Storm, has been written really stupid, like a, a jealous kind of lover, I, I just just odd. Uh, and uh, Tempo, who's a little bit of a, you know, off the side uh, character, but uh, Tempo has a, I think Tempo first also appeared during Peter David's uh, X Factor run is one of the Mutant Liberation Front characters, but I may have that wrong. That's, it's a, we'll see. Anyway, so these are the 10. And then Marvel being Marvel, because Marvel's got a Marvel, um, Marvel started producing, um, you know, two months before the Hellfire Gala and the Red Issue. They started producing little, uh, you know, comic strips, six panel comic strips. I think somebody was watching YouTube and they got that three minutes later kind of meme you know you, you you've seen that that bit um i think spongebob squarepants uses that I, I don't know i think a lot of them got excited about that so we've got these little clips featuring two of the people up for the vote and they're having to talk about how they're gonna win uh they're they're you know they're at the hellfire gala they're in their their gowns or their dresses or whatever it happens to be and then they kind of get into an argument and, uh, you know, and then it's it's revealed that um, they lost. And so first, uh, this is kind of an odd strategy because the comic hasn't shipped yet. And this is maybe a preview for the Hellfire Gala. But they're, they're basically um, revealing who's going to win um, before we get there to the actual issue. So it's like we're going to set up a surprise, but then we're going to take that surprise away. And so we, we first got uh, Strong Guy and Forge. And they're kind of arguing about how they're cool, but then they both lost, and they're they're sad. They're drinking at the bar, um, and then uh, th then we get uh, Maro and Armor talking about offense versus defense, and then they both lost. And then we get Cannonball and Sunspot over who's cooler, and then they both lost. And then uh, finally we get Tempo and uh, Boom Boom, and uh, and then you know they're. They also lost. Uh, Boom Boom's a, a drunk in this one. Uh, I guess they're reusing, they're, they're reusing the panels a lot. There's actually, you know, uh, four pieces of original art actually of the six. Anyway, uh, so this basically uh, spoils it in the sense that we are down to Polaris and Banshee. It's one of those two. Uh, we've seen now all the rest are losers. So it's one of those two. Uh, strong money is on Polaris. Uh, for, for a number of reasons, you can kind of piece together uh, Leah Williams, who's using Polaris over in X Factor, uh, seemed to get get kind of uh, aggressive about don't take my character away. And then um, then the, based on the back and forth, it felt like Polaris was probably that pick. Um, a lot of the Internet really wants Polaris in there because they uh, they want a strong uh, female character in the X-Men, I guess, forgetting that, that Jean Grey is is there. Um, I mean, and presumably Storm, I mean, who knows is going to be on this team uh, for the rest of the characters. X-Men as a title under Jonathan Hickman has been a rotating cast of characters. It's been, uh, you know, they, they kind of pick whoever's available for the mission. But we have seen Storm in there a lot. We've seen Jean Grey in there a lot, um, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we need a strong woman because, you know, Storm and Storm and Jean Grey, not not strong characters at all. That would sure whatever um banshee is uh, would be an interesting choice but uh you know you're you're again seeing a lot of the uh, we don't need another older white guy on the team and it's like you know can we just have a good story <laughs> can we can we not have the, the demographic thing play out again just like i think there's interesting things you can do with polaris for sure i think there's interesting things you can do with banshee for sure I think if you uh, Jerry Duggan is going to be the new writer of the X-Men title, if he has some good ideas for one character or the other and they can make some good stories out of it, I could care less. Put both of them on the team for all I care. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, I think I think it would be interesting to see them do more with Banshee. Uh, that's a character who has had almost nothing going on for quite some time. Uh, Leah Williams does seem to enjoy uh, writing Polaris over in X-Factor, so maybe you just leave things as they are and, and let them keep going, but it's a decision for the X-Office. The bigger question mark is, why spoil it this way? Uh, presumably, 
from what I'm told, we will get the answer to actually who who won uh, between Polaris and Banshee sometime in the next week. So it's uh, you know cool. Uh, thank that that thanks for that. I'm, I'm glad you're glad you're doing that, Marvel. That's um that's awesome. I I hate surprises. What's always crappy about that is they'll do this. And then somebody on, you know, somebody on Facebook or something will comment on it. Like, I hate this. And then everybody will descend on that person. Like, how put spoilers in there, dude. It's like the, the company spoiled it. What are you what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Spoilers in this video. Yeah. Should have should have should have said that up front. Probably. Hey, uh, do you like this development? Do you like being spoiled? Are you glad it came down to Polaris or Banshee? Are you are you pissed and, and you wanted something else to happen? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and thanks for listening.